Which is better, the Google Pixel 8a or the Samsung Galaxy S23 FE? Well, in this video, we're gonna find out. What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with my comparison of the Google Pixel 8a versus the Samsung Galaxy S23 FE. Now for full disclosure, I am part of Team Pixel and the Pixel 8a is a gift from Google. However, all opinions expressed in this video, of course, are completely my own. And then for the Galaxy S23 FE, I did buy this phone with my own money. Now I figured this video would actually be a very interesting one to make, considering that both of these phones are meant to be mid-range smartphones from their own brands. So the Pixel 8a did recently launch in May of 2024, whereas the Galaxy S23 FE did launch back in October of 2023. But both of these phones are meant to be kind of in that $500 to $600 price range, so that is considered to be the mid-range. Now the Pixel 8a does have an MSRP of $499, whereas with the S23 FE, this phone is a bit more expensive with an MSRP of $599. However, I have seen some places where you can buy it brand new right now for just $549. And then if you do want to go the carrier route, you can certainly save even more money here with the S23 FE. And then as of right now, I'm not aware of the Pixel 8a being on any carriers. However, eventually it might, hopefully. And then typically if you do buy a phone through a carrier, you can save a bit of money in exchange for your loyalty to that carrier. The main takeaway though with both of these devices is that they're meant to provide almost a flagship level experience despite them actually being mid-range. So for example, with the Pixel 8a, we are getting the Google Tensor G3 processor, which is the same one that's in the flagship Pixel 8 Pro. And then with the Galaxy S23 FE, this phone features the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, which when that processor was launched, it was a flagship processor and the best of the best from Snapdragon. Now since then, we have gotten the Gen 2 and then currently the Gen 3, but I guess what my point is, is that with both of these phones, it's not like either brand is throwing in some sort of cheap or lower end processor. They are giving us either what's currently the best of the best from them, or at least what previously was a generation or two ago. And then at first glance, these phones do appear to be very similar, but they also have quite a few differences when it comes to the overall build and design of them. Now the first thing I want to talk about are the displays of these devices. So with the Pixel 8a, we are getting a 6.1 inch display here, and it does feature Corning Grill Glass 3. Whereas with the S23 FE, we're getting a larger 6.4 inch display with Grill Glass 5. So a slightly more durable version of that glass compared to the 8a. And you can see when holding the two phones up side by side, without a doubt, the S23 FE is the larger phone of the two, which of course is partially due to it having that bigger display. Then beyond that, when it comes to the actual display technology, there are some differences here as well. So with the Pixel 8a, we're getting an OLED display compared to the S23 FE, where we're getting a dynamic AMOLED 2X display. And then both phones do feature a 120 Hertz refresh rate. So I'm definitely a fan of that fast and smooth refresh rate. It certainly makes these phones feel very premium, which for the most part they are anyway, but I am glad that we're getting that instead of 90 Hertz or even 60 Hertz. And then both phones do have 1080p display panels, so things are very crisp and clear here. Of course, you can go higher end when it comes to resolution, but I think for most people, 1080p is ample. And then as far as the PPI goes, since the Pixel 8a is a smaller phone, it does have a higher PPI at 430 compared to a 403 PPI with the S23 FE. Then when it comes to the aspect ratio, the Pixel 8a is 20 by 9 compared to 19 and a half by 9 with the Samsung. And then finally with the screen to body ratios, they're pretty similar, but things are slightly better with the S23 FE with this phone having an 83.2% screen to body ratio versus the Pixel 8a, which has an 81.6% screen to body ratio. But overall, both phones do have pretty slim bezels in general, and they both definitely look like high end pieces of hardware. Now up top here, both phones do feature front-facing cameras located in those hole punches. Now the hole punch is slightly bigger with the Pixel 8a in comparison to the S23 FE. Not really a big deal, but it is slightly different. And then the front camera on the Pixel is 13 megapixels versus the Galaxy here, which has a 10 megapixel front-facing camera. Now both of these devices do feature the same amount of internal storage at 128 gigabytes, and then neither of these two phones offer microSD card expansion. So I definitely do wish SD card expansion was offered in addition to also getting more internal storage. 
Now I do think in 2024, 128 gigs is plenty for most people out there, but at the same time, I would prefer a little bit more than that. I feel like 128 is definitely the bare minimum, especially as apps continue to get bigger and bigger. And it seems like a lot of these apps, once they especially start to cache information, can be multiple gigabytes at least. So I am curious to know what you think. Do you think 128 is enough or do you wish we got a bit more here with these devices? But again, I think overall 128 is not too bad for a mid-range smartphone. Now, both of these phones do have wireless charging, which is very nice. However, there are some differences. So with the Pixel 8a, we get wireless charging at up to 7.5 watts. And then with the S23 FE, we have wireless charging at up to 15 watts. So pretty much double there. And then with the S23 FE, we are getting reverse wireless charging as well. So technically you can use this phone to wirelessly charge other devices. So you might have a pair of headphones, for example, that are compatible with wireless charging. You can just put those headphones then on the back of this phone and then the phone will then recharge the headphones. Whereas the Pixel 8a, you're just getting kind of the standard traditional wireless charging, which is still nice to have, but not quite as feature rich as what we're getting here with the S23 FE. And then when it comes to the wireless charging speeds, of course it is faster here with the S23 FE, but keep in mind that the wireless charger you're using does have to actually be compatible with those top speeds. So if you're using a five watt wireless charger, for example, then it's gonna actually recharge these two phones at the same pace. Now both of these phones do have face unlock, which is awesome, but they also both have in-display fingerprint sensors. So let's first give that a try here with the Pixel 8a. And very fast and responsive. Let's try that one more time. There we go. And we'll now give it a try here on the Samsung. There we go, very fast. We'll try that again. And there we go. Now one thing worth noting here is that you can see on both phones, the placement of the fingerprint sensor are different. So it's a lot lower here in the Samsung, which I do feel like is a bit more intuitive compared to what we're getting here in the Pixel. It just makes it a little bit less awkward to access that fingerprint sensor. Now, it's certainly not a big problem on the 8A, but I do prefer the placement here on the Samsung. Now, one of the biggest differences with these phones definitely has to be the cameras that we're getting on the back of them. So the biggest difference is that we're getting one less camera here with the Pixel 8A. Now in general, Google's A-series has a great reputation of providing excellent photo and video quality, especially for being a mid-range device. So pretty much expect to get flagship level camera performance here with this phone. And that's been the way it has been for the last several years, especially with the A-series. So if you do really care about mobile photography, then you're gonna really like the Pixel 8a. And for that matter, you'll also like the S23 FE. Now the Pixel 8a has a 64 megapixel main camera, and then a 13 megapixel ultra wide angle camera that can capture images at up to 120 degrees. Whereas with the S23 FE, we're getting a triple camera setup with a 50 megapixel main camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle camera that can capture images at 123 degrees, and then finally we're getting an eight megapixel telephoto camera. So there is no telephoto of course here with the 8A. So I do actually find the telephoto to be pretty useful with any phones that do have it. And I wish that the Pixel did offer that. But again, at least for the cameras we're getting with the Pixel 8a, they have excellent optimization. So take a look at the camera apps on both phones here. You can see this is the standard main camera right now. Then from there, we can go over to these 0.5 and 0.6x right here to access the ultra wide cameras. And then with the ultra wide, we can fit a lot more into a single frame here, which is certainly very nice. But then the biggest difference is that with the Samsung, we can tap on where it says three right there and then access the 3x telephoto camera. So that is an actual optical zoom. Now you might've noticed on the Pixel, there's an option here where it says two, and that does zoom in at 2X, but really all it's doing is just cropping in on the image. So it's not actually a true optical zoom. So optical zoom, of course, will create a much better final result in comparison to digital zoom. And certainly having a telephoto camera, as I mentioned, does really come in handy. So that could potentially be a selling point in itself for you if you're trying to decide between one of these two devices. Now, in addition to that, we have portrait mode in both phones, so you can get those nice blurred out backgrounds, which is great. Another added bonus too is that you can use the telephoto camera for portrait mode. And then heading over to the front facing cameras here, we do have portrait selfies as an option on both devices. I also appreciate that you can crop out a little bit on both phones as well, if that is convenient for whatever reason. We can also capture standard selfies too. 
So again, even though these are meant to be mid-range smartphones, I do appreciate that we're getting so many different camera features with them. And then when it comes to video capture, there are some pretty major differences here. So both phones can capture 4K video at 60 FPS with the rear cameras. However, with the S23 FE, it can also capture 4K at 60 FPS with the front camera, whereas that's limited to just 30 FPS at 4K with the front facing camera on the Pixel 8a. And then finally, this isn't really a feature that I think too many people will use, but the S23 FE can actually capture 8K video at 24 FPS. So that is a feature that's not present here on the Pixel 8a. Now, as far as RAM and processor go, both of these phones are running eight gigabytes of RAM, so that's equal, but the processors are very different here. So with the Pixel 8a, we're getting the Google Tensor G3, and then with the S23 FE, as I mentioned earlier, we're getting the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Now, I did run a benchmark test here using Geekbench 6 on both devices, and here are the scores. So I'll let these numbers speak for themselves, but it does appear that the Pixel 8a did score higher compared to the Samsung. One thing that is interesting though is that I did run a test a little bit earlier when I first got this phone back in November, and you can see the scores were a bit higher. So I'm not sure why those scores went down from Android 14 compared to Android 13. I suppose maybe it's because Android 14 requires a bit more system usage here, but yeah, it's kind of interesting. I'm not sure why that is, but just know that both phones are very fast, especially for being mid-range devices. So I don't think one of them is necessarily way slower than the other. Now, as far as battery capacity goes, they are different. So the Pixel 8a, we have a 4,492 milliamp hour internal battery that can charge it up to 18 watts. And then the S23 FE has a 4,500 milliamp hour internal battery that's compatible with up to 25 watt fast charging. So it is nice that the Samsung can charge a bit faster compared to the Pixel 8a. But of course, keep in mind that you do have to actually use a wall adapter that is compatible with those charging speeds. Now, as far as the software goes, we've got Samsung's One UI experience here compared to the Pixel experience. And the Samsung has been updated to Android 14, as I mentioned a second ago. And of course, the Pixel 8a, which just launched recently, did launch with Android 14. So it really comes down to personal preference if you prefer Google's approach here or Samsung's approach where they've really customized things specifically to the Samsung One UI experience. But overall, I think both offer their various pros and cons and Samsung definitely has quite a few various features built into this phone. For example, one of them is that it does support Samsung DeX. So you can actually plug this device into an external monitor and then use a full on desktop mode. Whereas that's something that's not actually offered here with the Pixel 8a. And then both phones do offer stereo speakers and then NFC as well. So if you do want to use them for tap and pay, you certainly do have that ability. Now taking a closer look at the hardware of these two devices, on the left side of both phones, we have on the Pixel, the slot for the SIM card, and then on the Samsung, we have nothing here. Then on the right side, on the Pixel, we have the power button, volume up and volume down. Then on the Samsung, we have volume up and down, and then the power button. And then up top here in both devices, we have the noise canceling microphone. And then on the Samsung, we also have the SIM card slot. And then on the bottom of the two phones, we have the speaker, microphone, and USB-C port for charging and data transfer. And then taking a look at the back of the two phones, we of course have very different looking camera modules here. And then with the Pixel, we are getting a matte finish compared to a glossy finish here with the Samsung. Now you can see both phones actually pick up quite a few fingerprints. I do still prefer a matte finish as we're getting here at the Pixel in comparison, but both phones certainly are not immune to picking up fingerprints. So that is worth keeping in mind here. But I am curious to know, which phone do you think aesthetically looks better? But this concludes my comparison of the Google Pixel 8a versus the Samsung Galaxy S23 FE. I'm really curious to know what you think of these two phones. Certainly let me know in the comments section below. But this is Kevin here, and I will see you in the next one. Take care and have a great rest of your day.